All right, let's talk about the different type of edges on your hat. Uh, your fedora, your western. You got your raw edge, which is, you know, essentially just like cut like that. It's sharp. It's a clean look. Um, you've got the welted edge, which is uh, essentially kind of like the end is folded over and sewn it into itself, like a, like a hem on clothing, basically. Kind of like this Panama hat's edge. Okay. They take the felt, they sew it under, you know, fold it under for double strength, and then they sew it, make it a little thicker on the end. Um, some of our cheaper hats we start with, like the light felt crushables and stuff, or, you know, made in China things, have that edge simply because cheaper felt needs it um, with just a raw edge, cheaper felt just turns into like... You remember the felt you used when you were a little kid, like for crafts in kindergarten, like these little felt squares? It's like that stuff. So there's no control, it just goes up, down, has, you know, no stiffener, it's just horrible. Um, so cheaper felt needs a welted edge, it gives it strength. The third is a bound edge. The bound edge has a little ribbon trim on the edge. You know about those. Like the cool 1940s hats had them. Uh, my green hat with the black ribbon here on the edge. That's, a, that's called a bound edge because it has binding. Um, usually the binding matches the band, but it doesn't have to. We have gray Homburgs with like a black band. And then here is gray also. Which, you know, derbies and Homburgs always have that little finished edge. The, the bound edge, it has to. Sometimes the black looks a little too intense. Other companies, we do it with gray, some with black. I think the Stetson Gray Homburg, we do gray here, you know, and gray there. Um, it's just up to the way you design the hat. Um, that's the third kind of edge. Now, when I first got the job, I was wondering, what's the deal? Why do certain hats do better? Certain hats don't do better. Um, is it the edge? Is it the raw edge? Is it the quality of the felt? Is it the price? Um, what is it? The thickness of the felt? The stiffener? Um, is it just made wrong? Um, certain hats that are super expensive will fail. Uh, $200 hats, they kind of curl up in the rain and they turn into these kind of triangle things. They just curl up and permanently, you know. Um, like each edge just curls. And when that happens, it's generally the felt is thin. It's a lightweight hat and it's just companies making them thinner and thinner, they're just not meant for rainstorms. Um, they're meant for lightweight, for comfort, they're like, they're not rain hats, you know, fedoras just are not. They're made out of rainproof material. Some of them will do beautifully in the rain, some of them, you never know. So it's a, it's a good idea to wear your older hat, you know, don't wear your most expensive hat thinking that'll do the best. Um, it's not always the case. Um, where you're at, that's, you know, all this, you don't care if it gets a little wavy in the brim. And you might be surprised, maybe it'll be perfect. Uh, the next day it'll look 100% perfect. A lot of times they do, but it's always a gamble. Um, the people in the hat shops will tell you they're meant for light drizzles, you know, light rains, but not a torrential downpour, which is, yeah, you know, if you're getting a few spots on it here and there, it might not do anything, but if it's getting totally waterlogged and soaked, you know, and just pouring off you for an hour. Um, yeah, the hat's not going to look the same the next day. So it, it could look really good or it can look really bad. And you never know. Um, that's why yeah, fedoras are not really rain hats. Um, generally, the further back you go, the vintage hats are made out of very expensive felt, you know, like this stuff that we pay 400 bucks for now, uh, like, like the beaver. Um, that's what everything was made out of back then. But uh, me personally, I don't like used hats or old hats. I, I like them to be perfectly new when I purchase them. It's just a, a personal item, and that's, that's just me. Um, I don't really see anything wrong with it, but it's like one of my pet peeves, you know. And I have a lot of weird pet peeves, like I have to wear old cotton and stuff. If you notice, it's like I'm always in a t-shirt, no matter what season it is. And that's me. Um, I don't put linings in my hats. I like the linings out because I get a little hotter. Um, it doesn't mean that what's good for me is good for you, but I can tell you through experience what I found with the different edges um, were pretty surprising. Um, when I first got to the shop, I noticed some hats with raw edges, thin, soft felt, and wide brims. Those three combinations, those are the hats that tend to curl when they get waterlogged and super soaked and stuff. Um, 
they don't have lots of like stiffening or holding that that uh, flange in place. You know, picture this curve, right? Is kind of like uh, it's blocked on a piece of wood, like a shape, a mold, kind of a you know, like a toilet sheet piece, toilet seat shaped piece of wood, flat on top with a curve on the bottom. You know, mm -hmm. curve, right? Okay, it's like a donut, a rung. Okay, they kind of they wet it and they tie it and they stretch it really tightly onto this piece of wood. It's uh, steamed on there. It's got stiffener and it's really tightly pushed with pushing sticks onto it, and then it kind of shrinks onto it. So it's like really set. That that shape is set. So even if you roll the hat up, take it off, this shape will still always be here. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with popping these shapes out or whatever. Um, it's always going to just return. That's because the hat has been blocked under you know high pressure and steam and heat and all this stuff. You know. Okay, there is definitely some sort of chemical reaction that happens to the felt itself and the stiffener and everything. The shapes are in there. Um, all right. So think of that shape as being locked with a uh, almost a plasticky coating, like they dip it in a plastic spray and they freeze it, like frozen in carbonite with this kind of like, uh, you know, plasticky lacquer stuff. It's not that thick. It's thin. It's a spray. Okay. But, um, Sometimes they actually paint it on, you know, like with, but they don't spray it on. It depends, you know, what kind of stiffener they're using, but generally it's a spray. And, um, what do you call it? Uh, the hat is being held up in this flange with that, that process, with the, the cooling of that spray, you know, it gets harder and harder. Um, so sometimes it, it lets go. The hat is too soft or maybe you're leaving it on its brim every day and it's just getting softer and softer and softer and that that hold kind of lets go, you know, just flops. That's normal. That's the sort of everyday, you know, process. That's the, 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 the journey of every hat. Just like your your shoes eventually get worn out, the soles wear out, and then there's nothing left of the soles. That's the natural wearing out of a hat. It's what should happen, you know. If you don't wear the hat at all, the flange might just stay perfect, but you're wearing it. So, you know, it's not like you're misusing it. It just happened. The brim will be, you know, like a nice tight flange, and then it lets go slowly. It just does. Um, certain hats seem to hold it even when they're really, really soft. Other hats don't. Um, it tends to be very, very high-end hats that can be soft and floppy and still hold the flange. Um, the point I'm getting at, I don't know what I'm really getting at, is I'm almost trying to show you the mechanics of how these brims hold together. When I first uh, started seeing, you know, a few brims failing, I noticed it was a lot of very wide brims, three-inch brims with raw edges that were not thick. Not like a McGill Untouchable or a Madrid um, or another three-inch brim that's really thick. It was a thin felt, thin, lightweight felt. Um, a raw edge, very little stiffener, you know, like really light and soft, not like doesn't have a lot of that to it. It was more, uh, you know, just soft and luxurious. And all of those hats with the raw edges and the big brims and the uh, soft felt, not stiff felt, seem to be more susceptible to that. So I sort of assumed that was the deal. Um, then I started to see later on, I noticed that there were some hats with uh, bound edges that were doing the same thing. I was like, ah, oh, it's not a raw edge thing, okay. So I assume welted edges were the strongest, you know, because they're double thick on the ends and they always seem better. But welted edges are usually on shorter brims. Um, and those short brims are what does better. A, a thick hat with a shorter brim just stays nice. Uh, like a Saxon or an Asher or something, but a, uh, a bigger brim is just more of it to to get floppy. Also, the wider you go, the the softer the flange is. They're more curvy and tight with a short brim. As the brim gets wider, it becomes flatter. The flange is more relaxed. So you could look at short brims. They have a tight little scoop, and as it gets wider and wider and wider, the scoop on the brim gets more subtle. Um, it's just a design thing, it's the way it works, or a geometry thing or something. Um, but, yeah, is it the welted edge or is it the short brim? 
I came to the conclusion that the welt always helps a brim. Um, when the, cheap, the welt is cheaper, it should have it. Either a welt or super stiffener. Like if it's a wool hat, not light felt, just regular old wool. I'm not talking about patented crushable light felt wool. If it's wool, it should have either a welted edge or it should be so stiff that you can knock on it like a door, just like kind of like our wool derby. We have a hat called the uh, the wool felt derby and a, uh, a stingy wool pork pie, which is another hat that's inexpensive, made in USA, made in New York, and 100% wool. Now, if they were soft and that uh, cheaper felt, they would do very poorly. The first rain would just make them, you know. So they have to be starchy and stiff so that they're reliable. It cancels out the cheaper felt. As you get better and better felt, fur felt, nicer fur felt, thicker fur felt, less of those things are necessary. Now, where do the bound edges fall into that? I thought the bound edges were somewhere in between. Somewhere not as good as a welted edge, but definitely a little bit better than a raw edge. Um, I was wrong. The bound edge seems to have very, very little effect. Um, you can still have bound edges that curl too. They, they do. It has a lot more to do with the hats being lightweight, thin, soft, big brims. So if you're doing a two and three eighths, two and a half inch, three inch, and the hat is soft, um, eventually you're going to get something, you know, the brim will be just not perfect, you know, it's not going to be a, you know. Um, it may take you time, it may never happen, um, but these are the risks that I, I started to see that uh, softer brims, thinner brims, um, they're, you know, those are the cul culprits, so um, you, you're usually better with those hats to buy very good felt, custom hats, you know, stuff like Rocher, um, they're really nice. Um, the Miguel stuff is, is gorgeous, uh, they seem to give you a ton of bang for the buck. Um, Celentino, I mean, some of their more exotic felts are incredible. Their velours, their suede felts, their, uh, the beaver finishes, all those things are incredible and um, they have more colors than anybody. And their consistency is, you know, uh, unbeat. Their stuff has been exactly the same for like 20 years and then you look at vintage ones and they feel and they look the same and they have the same linings, the same logo, the same leather, everything. So it's just so consistent. Um, Celentino, Acubra, um, certain Stetsons have been very consistent and um, what else? Rocher is pretty good. Rocher is very good. Um, again, it's uh, stiffness is going to give you more stability. Softness is going to give you more comfort, more lightweight, luxurious, you know. But uh, you have to ask yourself, are you going to be getting these things, you know, drenched in rain or not? Um, if yes, you know, make sure if you're doing a bigger brim, you know, you've got something with a little snap, something a little hardy. Uh, a Madrid is a great 3-inch brim. It's really nice and snappy. It's got some stiffener in it, plus very high-grade felt, a good flange. Uh, the brim and the crown are perfectly stiffened. Everything about the Madrid is just like perfect. Um, the, the Cyrus is an example of a softer hat with a velvety texture. It's like a, a raw edge, uh, maybe with a whip stitch, uh, two and a quarter inch brim. So it's like a medium to classic. It's a little smaller than two and three eighths. Uh, smaller than this, but not much. And um, it has a very soft velvety texture, kind of like, I don't know, velvet, like crushed velvet feel, but it doesn't have the tacky look of crushed velvet. It's just, uh, it's richer and darker. You know when certain hat felts have that velvety finish, the blacks appear blacker, and the browns appear richer brown, because it's like a velour kind of a thing. It's a little more plush. It's like that, but in a very subtle way. They call that a suede felt which is like a velour finish, but it's not thick and wintry like velour. Um, like Biltmore's Golden Pheasant collection, that's real thick, classic velour. Like when people used to come and say, y'all have velours? Uh, velours are like the old hat that Run DMC used to wear. Short brim, velour, uh, center crease, pinch front, two inch brim, with a braid, a self band made out of the same felt, but braided. Um, that's what Kojak used to wear. 
the Kojak. So if you watch Kojak or look at some pictures of his hat, that's what the mm -hmm. classic velour used to be. Velours are thick. They're wintry, just like generally long hair beaver hats are. So um, things like suede felt gives you the same weight as a regular felt with that soft texture. I mean, a temple, or whether, they feel a little velvety, but I'm talking much more. Kind of like the texture color looks richer when you have that. So the Cyrus is very like luxurious, expensive looking, and it's soft. Um, it's not a snappy hard brim. You know, like the Madrid has got a little more snap to it. But um, it's nice. It's got like, you know, enough snap and a medium brim. It's not so big that the brim gets out of control. So it's like less brim, more control. Um, the Saxon is a two inch brim with a welted edge. It's one of the most controllable, um, snappiest, you know, easiest to maintain Stetsons because it's a shorter brim and a welted edge. That's essentially the Frank Sinatra hat. It's, you know, when people are looking for that look, that's it. Um, a guy comes in with a short, you know, nice haircut, uh, a blazer on, a good looking coat, you know, and a uh, stylish guy looking for, you know, his first hat, something cool. I generally don't recommend, you know, a big full brim like this. Um, I go with something a little bit more subtle and authentic, uh, you know, less costume like and more kind of like what it. A cool 60 year old guy, George Clooney looking dude, should be wearing um, or would have worn, you know, in the 50s, 60s, or, you know, 70s, whatever. Um, a two inch brim with a welt to me is elegant, understated, business like, or super cool too. You know, you flip the brim off, you wear it in black. The Saxon to me is one of the, uh, it's just a great hat to recommend. I wholeheartedly love recommending it. Um, and I kind of want one myself really badly in black. Um, it's like the Blues Brothers hat too, when you flip it up, you know, you flip it down, it's basically Sinatra. Um, you know, you do it like that, you give it a little, you know. Um, the Kojak Velours, we do those on uh, special order, I think. We can get them through Kappa's headwear. Um, they might be closed for COVID now, I'm not sure. Maybe they're open, probably. But uh, sometimes we could do a special order if you want a Kojak, but uh, it's not in our catalog. You know? um, so in conclusion, I'm going to say that um, welted edges, i found, do help. They, get, they give you a little bit of stability. It's more the thickness of the felt. It's got to be a good amount of felt. What happens is companies start to cut corners and they need to save money. They want to save money in a place that's invisible, that you can't notice. So if they change the leather sweatband to like a plastic sweatband or a cheap bonded leather that looks like plastic, you're going to notice instantly and say, wow, Stetson's gone downhill. But if you just make the felt a little thinner, most people will say, okay, they feel a little lighter. That's nice. Generally, it'll be okay. You know, you could go lighter, 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 lighter to some extent. Um, some hats are super heavy, like the Premier Stratoliner. Some hats are uh, very light, like the uh, Stratoliner Special Edition, which is meant for lightweight comfort and something to wear a little bit more every day. That's you know comfortable, lightweight, and just an all-around modern version of the Stratoliner. It's modern. It doesn't have this super high, baggy, vintagey crown that a lot of people can't stand. It's a vintage purist thing or a kind of a connoisseur's thing. Guys who have been wearing hats for a while, they eventually get into the high crowns, the baggy, blocky crowns, like Bogart and stuff. It's a cork sniffer thing. Most people are turned off by it. They want a crown more like this. That's just nice, balanced, and not too, you know, oh, look at this guy. Who the heck is he? You know? um, other people want it super authentic. They want the crown that Indiana Jones has in that picture, the one that goes up and then flat, you know, it's like Humphrey Bogart and those old, they, they don't want it to go in like this. Personally, I, you know, I don't care that much. Um, I just like hats that are the right color, that look cool, you know, and I like hats that make me look good, that I don't look dumb or, you know, that if I put it on, it's like not detracting, it's kind of adding, you know, or something. But, um, and that's not easy to do, you know, finding the right color, the right crown, the right brim size, the right price range, and then when you nail it, you know, boom, you got it. It's like finding a pair of shoes that actually fit you perfectly without, you know, I'm gonna make thicker socks or pull the inner sole out or let it stretch or I gotta stretch. It's perfectly fitting you. So 
when I find something that looks okay, feels okay, and it's a cool color, um, and it's not failing on me, and the brim's not going crazy, you know, out of control, that's enough. I don't need, like, that authentic crown or this band on it, or, well, that hat has got the right crown, but it doesn't have the right band and the right edge to, you know, you'll never get everything. You just never will. Um, if I was able to order a signature model, you know, this, the Kevin signature model reverend, yeah, I would get it in whatever purple sparkle with a green sparkle pick card, uh, these two pickups, you know, this board and, and that and that, and I would have a switch that you would hit up and down. I don't like these Telecaster switches where you have to reach down and go like that. Uh, I like to slap it down real fast like a Les Paul. So if I'm doing something like this, and I want to get down to the neck pickup, uh, to the bridge pickup, I want to slap it fast, slap it back. Less point could slap up, slap down. This you have to find the position. It's very difficult, so it's not perfect for me, but it's still my dream guitar because I know I'll never find it perfect just for me. Um, you can modify your stuff, right? You could change this tortoise guard to, to purple sparkle. Um, you could put a, uh, a tremolo bar on it if you don't have it. This was given to me by a dear friend, thank you. And um, you can do stuff to it, you know, and then eventually make it yours. Um, this little feather makes the temple feel better for me, you know. It's a small modification, if you even call it, but uh, you'll never find all the boxes checked. Uh, you'll find a good deal of boxes, and then the rest is up to you to break it down, do your thing with it. You know, if you want it to look a certain way, then just do your thing with it. But um, I don't think you need to um, expect everything. It's never going to happen. Um,
Bring up the invited and listening. Happy. Have a happy, happy. Everybody else have a very happy day. Thank you.